Today on this old house, the original windows of this house are one of its best features, but they all needed work. Riley got the job of refurbishing them. And it's the classic HVAC challenge. Where do you hide the ductwork? What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. Five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be big. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money to the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Narragansett, Rhode Island, where we are working on this Queen Anne style house that has graced this main boulevard for more than a century. Morning to Chris, say Tommy. Hey Kevin. Take that, sir. Thank sure. you. So the house had fallen into disrepair over the last few years, but our new homeowners, well, they're going to change all of that. And the work started out here with the front porch, which was rotted all the way from the piers up to the roof. Now, much of it had to come down and be replaced. You can see that the brick piers have been rebuilt right there. And this knee wall, well, this is all new and it's going to get shingles. But the columns that were here when we arrived, one, two, three, all five of them were able to be saved, although the decking was not, which is why Adam is putting down some new material right here. Good morning, Adam. And inside, well, just as many changes in here as well. The original staircase is right here. It will stay here, although be rebuilt. And in this area, well, this was the front living room. And right through there was a three-season porch. Hello, boys. That is going to be turned into interior four-season space. And now it is a big, wide-open room. Used to be a wall here and a hallway right here, which led back into what was the original kitchen. Now, there was another wall in the back of the kitchen. Behind it was the actual working with the stove and the sink and, believe it or not, of all things, a toilet in the kitchen. But before this house had indoor plumbing, it had an outhouse. And that was this space right here. There was no access directly into the house. There was a door on this side. But now it's been opened up because this is going to become a pantry off of the kitchen. Also, also of the kitchen was the dining room right here. You may remember that there was a bank of these beautiful stained glass windows, and don't worry, those are going to be saved and put back in place. The original house ended right here, so all of this space is new. And this is the mudroom with a little uh, lavatory right here, the ability to enter from the back of the house, the garage, or from the front of the house here, right here. And you can see what they're trying to replicate on the house. They've got the rosettes in the middle, but got those lines and the circles and Chris I presume for you guys it just starts with the layout yes we lay it out from the top down and depending on the length of the rafter we scale the distance between the two layouts right and then it's a matter of a route and a drill bit so different lengths means different spacing between this detail correct and then we're trying to get this right here these are the lines that we saw you put dados yeah. and then this put two circles right there all right you've got a couple laid out already Tommy ready to go yeah these are Ready to go. We've got our location where the dados are going to go. We've got our location for the holes. But if you notice, there's lines right here. And these are lines that are offset lines. To cut the dados and make them straight, we're going to use a router with a three-quarter inch bit set to the depth, which is about three-eighths of an inch deep. And to find that offset mark, you simply take and hold the router bit in the right angle so it's the longest point of the circle. And you measure from the edge out five and a half inches. So all I now is take and measure from the edge that I want the router bit to go and if I go five and a half inch offset right here and I take it over here five five here yep. would be ten and a half and so on down the line so now we have a straight edge so now to make it square and straight we hold this on my mark right there keep it tight make it snug bring my square in keep it tight to the square Lock it in, and now we're ready to make the cut. All right, there we have a nice straight dado yeah. right along the edge of the line, a perfect location. So then we're just going to have to replicate it, just move right down the rack. Right.
right, that's it. Now Chris is going to drill some holes in the details. And what do you got for a drill bit there, Chris? I'm using a Forstner bit because it gives you a nice clean hole, nice clean edge. Yep. We've already got our layout marks. On that depth, pretty much eyeballing it. If I can have my square, let's just go check it. Oh, yeah. And like Tommy, you just go down and do all the rest. So we've got the dados, we've got the holes, and up on the original, we also have rosettes. Right. We're waiting on the shop for our rosettes, and they'll be the last thing that go on. They go on in the field between the details. Beautiful. All right, looking good already. So we have the rosette, that's the last one. Cedar, back primed. It's gonna go right there. First thing we wanna do is put a little bit of adhesive on the back side. And tack it on. There you go, Chris. It's a good look, I like it. Yeah, it just, little things like that, dress it right up. Hey, Jeff. Hey, guys. How are you? Looking good. Yeah, that's a nice detail. So you got a plan for getting these up there? Yeah, basically we're going to use the lift, and I'll get on the ladder. Uh, we'll bring it up, and we've got temporary brackets up there so we can slide it into place, and then basically screw down through the plywood right into the backside. Oh, yeah. Finishing touch right there. Looks good, huh? New meets the old. Nice job, guys. Thanks for the help. So down here in the mechanical room is underneath the main house living room, and this is the unit that'll provide all the heating and cooling for the original building. You can see return air starts right here, coming back to the unit. It goes through an electronic air cleaner to really clean the air. It then goes through this furnace section. This is a modulating gas furnace right here. These pipes right here is the exhaust, the exhaust here or combustion air here. So it's so efficient, you can use PVC or plastic. They've hung the unit nicely from the structure to transfer vibration noise so it doesn't go all through the building. Now air drives and leaves from there, goes across the heat pump inverter cooling section. So this one unit is gonna have two zones on it, really smart zones. It'll go out to this plenum zones. This goes out to the second floor right here, and the other goes out right here for the first floor. Now, it was quite a challenge for the guys to get it down here in this too low basement, but it was a real challenge to actually drive that ductwork up through the existing first floor tastefully without wrecking all the structure. Let me show you. So up here in the first floor, I'm right above our unit for this main building. It's gonna supply both this floor and the second floor. So look at this, it's a wide open space, but we need to get the ductwork from here up through. But there's only one place on this whole first floor that we could potentially hide it. And of course, there's gonna be a fire feature right here, so there's no way to come up through here. So we found the only one spot, because of the way the joists run down here, that we could come up from the basement to the first floor right here. And then we couldn't go straight up because it doesn't line up upstairs, so we had to offset. And look at this, the only spot you could find the offset point is right at the end of this steel, and it sneaks up to the second floor. And the same thing on the other side, on the return side. So now the cabinet people will come and put custom cabinets in here and make it look like it was easy. Now on the new work, it was a lot more straightforward. So up here above the garage is all new work, and it's going to be a bedroom, living space, and bathroom. And down below it is a cabana space, and it gives us a perfect chance to see the system in its entirety. And because it's new construction, it can be hidden behind this knee wall. So, return air will come back through here and it'll pass through an electronic air cleaner that'll never need to be really cleaned or changed. You can wash it and keep it maintained, but it'll just keep the air plenty clean. Now here, 
is the gas furnace section and it modulates down to 75% less than its full output, so down to 25%. At the end, it's so efficient, it has a little bit of flue gas going out here and a little bit of acidic water, so it'll pass through this neutralizer right here. You can see the limestone pellets that'll neutralize that water before it goes into the drain. And that's the heating portion. Now, the fan that pushes the air out to the ductwork is also an ECM blower, and that'll modulate. So that's not new, an ECM blower and a modulating gas furnace. But what is new is this next section. This is an inverter heat pump section. Now, an inverter heat pump, we talked about them before. The compressor never really shuts off. It constantly just puts out the right amount of cooling power or heating power in heating mode. And it can that means it's going to dehumidify better because it's never not just going to be on and then off. It's just constantly just keeping up. And finally, outside, the condenser is as quiet as a mouse. Not bad. The original windows of this house are one of its best features, but they all needed work. Riley's to repair rather than rebuild, especially with the windows. I mean, the windows give so much character to the house. Uh, they're over 100 years old. And Do they require that the windows yeah, be saved? Yes. Yeah. So even on um, the west side of the house where the new addition is, we took windows out of there and we're actually putting them in on the other side of the addition just to keep that historic value right so we know it's protected by the historic commission yep. and that was on their list of things to do yeah had you done this sort of restoration work on old windows before i personally haven't no no yeah. um so it was a lot of researching on how to do it um different ways to do it safe ways i mean there's lead paint all over them so it's like um scraping sanding and all that dust is horrible for you so we didn't really want to go that route it's a lot more work too um, the heat using a heat to strip is pretty dangerous I mean that can combust at any second like um, so we actually ended up removing the sashes and steaming them in a steam box that we constructed here in the shop um, you, a, you, you made your own steam box yep yeah. and uh, pumped a wallpaper steamer <laughs> into the box and left them in there for about 30 to 45 minutes um right when you take that sash out the paint is like oozing off all you gotta do is take a putty knife and a scraper and it comes right off and the colored glass is super unique to that time period and that style so the steam helped us loosen the glazing we can pop the the uh glazing pins out and the glass comes right out in one piece so roughly how many windows were involved how many did you work on took about 25 goes out and it's two sashes each so there was about a little less than 50 right. sashes total so what did you think of these original windows when you started kind of you know picking them apart super impressive the woodworking honestly um they're all through tenons here with pins through tenon mortise here with a pin um still solid i mean this is 100 years old and that is rugged serious time went into this so it'd be a shame to throw that out start new you know what I mean so and what'd you think of the hardware what for hardware did you find the hardware is pretty interesting something I'd never seen before it's called the sash stay and this lever here is on the inside of the window so you go to open the window and you pull this up that lever there pulls in and it releases the tension from the jam and it allows you to move this up and down and that's something I'd never seen before you weren't able to save them all no I think there's four sashes total in the whole house that we had to rebuild. These windows are all true divided for livable space. I and mean, we had to refigure how to build the windows using quarter inch tempered glass um, compared to the, the uh, eighth inch glass. So the style of the joinery is a little different, but the look comes out the same. Right. We also added some weather stripping. There was absolutely no weather stripping in the old windows. So you go like this and it's rattling. There's, there's nothing there. So it was really fun to be able to try and match the old woodworking with the new windows. And uh, I think they're all going to look really great. Hey, Jeff, Riley, how you guys doing? Tommy. Looks like you're building a new window here. What's going on? So we actually have a whole bunch of scenarios going on at the house. We have some sashes that were good. We were able to refurbish, clean them up, sand them down, and repaint them. And then we had some sashes that were damaged. 
do we have to re replace those? In this case, the jam was good, but the sash was in rough shape. So here it is here. Oh yeah, it's definitely in rough shape. The tenant's gone and has rotted. Yep. Same thing over there. The other end's rotted. Oh boy, it's yeah, falling, it's falling apart. apart. Do I see charring on this window? Yes, yeah, so remember that charring we discovered in the attic. Oh, this, yeah. this was actually in the attic. Well, this baby is beyond repair, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, so Riley's got a plan here on how we're going to remake it. Look at that. Were... Nice job there, Riley. Looks so pretty good. It's a little good. bit oversized here, so like you said, it's going into an existing opening. We made it oversized so we can go on site, fit it nice and tight, and then it will get painted after that. Okay, so you're in the beginning process here. You get a nice joint right here, nice and tight, so they're not going to twist out on you. Uh, very nice. And so the plan here is not individual panes of glass, it looks like. Right. So the, uh, the space that this is going back in is, is now conditioned space, but it's also in the loft area where the kids are. So we, yeah. we, need it, we need it to be tempered, so in that case we can have it insulated as well. So you're going to have an insulated, two insulated panes put inside of this. So this is actually going to be like a grid system. Right. Now the benefit to two panes of glass, in other words, one on the bottom and one on the top with the space, along all of this is actually much more efficient than to have individual panes of glass right. because around the perimeter of any size pane of glass that's the most inefficient part so the bigger the pane the more efficient it is all right so the next step is have you got the uh, profile set up here yeah. right over here so we got two section two sides so this yeah. uh it's actually mitered in oh i see so you're going to miter the joint it's going to go Let's see if i can get this right here and these are all going to fit right in here. Let me see if I can get this right here, too. That's going to go there. And this one is going to go here. The detail is pretty nice. What a fit. Look at that. You get those all in, you get the same profile, the same detail that's on the house. Great. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, next we're going to take those molding profiles and actually glue and pin them all the way around so that we can get this painted get the glass in and then we'll put this grid back on top on the other side and finish some molding on that side all right so you gotta glue them and pin them you said right all right i'll give you a hand rebuilt them, primed them, and sent them to the window glazer. Once they got the windows, they cut the panes of glass to fit all the openings, and then they puttied them and set them in the open. So here's the one of the old windows that were rebuilt and reconditioned to fit back into the house. It has a new frame around it, the sash was reconditioned and rebuilt, new panes of glass. Uh, but we needed some new windows because of the ad and some window openings were changed so we had a window manufacturer make some windows as close to the new wi old windows as they could and you can see right here that these windows are actually the same look small panes of glass with a large one in the middle but these are actually insulated glasses two panes of glass put together with an air gap and so that you don't see through that space between the mutton that's applied to the glass here and on the outside they put a metal divider in so by having that metal strip or in behind the muttons on the inside and the outside, that actually is called simulated divided light, SDL. It actually creates a more efficient window as opposed to individual panes. But I really like these old profiles. I like the dimensions, the smaller mutton strip. I like the fact that it's a, a narrow window, really petite. And all of these are individual panes of glass. But to get the efficiency of this window to match or come close to the new windows we're going to have to add some type of a storm panel on the outside or the inside we also made a parting bead right here in the middle that separates the top sash from the bottom sash but also allows them to put a piece of weather stripping in here to make the window more efficient okay now the first thing we need to do is flash this opening before we
Now we want to seal this all across the bottom and up with another piece. Zip it. I want to peel off your second okay. part. Bring it right down and tight into the corner. All right, we push it tight to the structure, and now we just slice the corners again. We peel it down. And now, push it down, tight to the wall. Okay, now we've created our pan. All right, now we'll do up the sides. Now normally when you're putting on your house wrap, you want to run it past the opening and slice it. But we didn't do it in this case, so just to make up for that, we're going to add a piece of the house wrap and we're going to wrap it into the opening. I love nice these job. I love these old windows. They look great. All right, so what's up for the next time? So next time we're going to rebuild that section of the chimney, but only from the attic up. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. Well, and I'm going to help Adam do some of that decorative siding, so that should be fun. Sounds good. So until next time, I'm Tom Silva. I'm Riley Partridge. And I'm Jeff Sweeter. For this old house. So what do you get, like about 25 more of these to look at? <laughs>